Charles Bronson was an American actor whose rags to riches story is quite fascinating. At the height of his fame in the early 70s, he was the world's number one box office attraction and he was getting $1 million per film. He was often cast in roles as police officers, gunfighters, or vigilantes seeking revenge. But in real life, he was an American kid who served his country well and then went on to bigger and better things. Bronson was born Charles Dennis Buzinski on November 3, 1921 in the coal region of Johnstown, Pennsylvania. He was the 11th of 15 children born to a Lithuanian Catholic family to Walter and Mary Buzinski. Later on, when Charles is making a go at films, he would change his last name from Buzinski to Bronson so that he would sound more appealing to Americans. Bronson was born in the United States, but he never spoke a single word of English in his early childhood. In fact, it wasn't until he was in his teens until he started speaking English. Many of the other kids in the coal mine region were just like this. Some of them spoke Lithuanian and Russian just like he did. Since he learned English later, many of the people that he served with in the military thought he was actually from another country because of his accent. When he was 10 years old, his father died, and this forced him to go work in the mines. He started out in the mining office, and then he and his brother went into the mines. He received one dollar for each ton of coal that he mined. He and his brother were often removing stumps in between the mines, and cave-ins were very common. His family was very poor, and they were often hungry. During the Great Depression, it got even worse. Milk and clothes were hard to come by. But Bronson persevered and became the first person in his family to graduate high school. He continued to work in the mines until he enlisted in the U.S. Army Air Corps in 1943 during the height of World War II. Bronson served as an aerial gunner in the Boeing B-29 Superfortress. During the war, he was based out of Guam with the 61st Bombardment Squadron within the 39th Bombardment Group. There he flew 25 missions over Japanese homelands. On his last mission, a Japanese fighter plane came towards his bomber plane and fired directly at him, hitting him in both arms. He received a Purple Heart for the wounds that he received in battle. Bronson processed down to the Army Air Corps in 1946. He was the type of guy that didn't really talk about his time in service. After he got out of the service, he worked at various odd jobs until he joined a theatrical group in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He continued to study art, and he was hired as a set designer painting backgrounds. In 1949, Charles got married to Harriet Tendler. The two met in acting school when she was 18 and he was 26 years old. Her father supported them as they both pursued their dreams of acting. The couple would have two kids together, Suzanne and Tony, before divorcing in 1965. His first film role was an uncredited one as a sailor in You're in the Navy Now in 1951. He continued on in multiple films throughout 1951 and 1952, which were credited with his name listed as Charles Buzinski. With each role he gained, he had more experience and more notoriety. In 1952, he appeared in the boxing ring with Roy Rogers in Rogers' show Knockout. He also appeared in an episode of The Red Skelton Show as a boxer. He appeared with fellow guest star Lee Marvin in an episode of Biff Baker, USA, an espionage series on CBS starring Alan Hale Jr. He then changed his surname from Buzinski to Bronson at the request of his agent who feared his Eastern European surname would ruin his career due to the growing Cold War concerns. His first film as Charles Bronson was Vera Cruz in 1954. He also made a strong impact in the Alan Ladd western Drumbeat as the main villain. He then had a significant role in Jabai, starring Glenn Ford. Bronson had the lead role in an episode of The Apache Kid in the crime drama The Sheriff of Cochise, starring John Bromfield. He was in three episodes of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Bronson started appearing in more of the Western series genre, including Colt 45, Sam Tuller's Run of the Arrow, and also Butch Cassidy in the TV Western series Tales of Wells Fargo. In 1958, Bronson scored the lead in ABC's detective series, Man with a Camera, in which he portrayed Mike Kovac, a former combat photographer freelancing in New York City. During that same time, he was also the leading man in some low-budget films such as Machine Gun Kelly, Gang War, When Hell Broke Loose, and The Showdown at Boot Hill in 1959. 
1960, Bronson gamered attention in The Magnificent Seven, in which he was cast as one of the seven gunfighters taking up the cause of the defenseless. Eli Wallach said that Bronson pretty well kept to himself and was a loner. He received $50,000 for this role. In 1961, Bronson was nominated for an Emmy Award for a supporting role in an episode entitled Memory in White of CBS's General Electric Theater, hosted by Ronald Reagan. In 1963, Bronson was in The Great Escape, where he played a claustrophobic Polish prisoner of war guy named Danny Walensky, nicknamed the Tunnel King. This was an interesting role for Bronson to play because he said he was claustrophobic due to his time working in the coal mines. The film was a huge hit and he had one of the leads. Bronson then guest starred on Bonanza as Henry Starr in 1964. He had the lead in Guns of Diablo in 1965 which was a western. Bronson then had an excellent role in Dirty Dozen in 1967 where he played an army death row convict on a suicide mission. He was the third lead, but it was a box office success. In 1968, he married English actress Jill Ireland. They met in 1962, and he stayed married to her until her death in 1990. They lived in a Bel Air mansion with his two kids from his previous marriage, her three kids from her previous marriage, and one that they adopted. From 1968 to 1972, he saw stardom in Europe. There he made his way into French films and also 1968's Once Upon a Time in the West, which was a Sergio Leone film. Leone originally wanted Bronson in 1964's A Fistful of Dollars, but Bronson turned that role down and it launched the career of Clint Eastwood into film stardom. Leone once called Bronson the greatest actor he ever worked with. In 1968, Bronson appeared in a French action film called Guns for San Sebastian alongside Anthony Quinn. He also played the lead in a French thriller called Rider on the Rain. It was a big hit in France and won the Hollywood Golden Globe Award for Best Foreign Language Film. He continued to star in French-Italian action films, which earned him a special Golden Globe Henrietta Award in 1972 for world film favorite Mel together with Sean Connery. In 1972, he returned to the United States and made a string of successful action films for United Artists. Those include Chato's Land in 1972, The Mechanic in 1972, Stone Killer in 1973, Chino in 1973, and Mr. Majestic in 1974. United Artists brought his Italian-made Violent City to America's mainstream audience. It was released in Europe in 1970, but it came to the U.S. in 1974 under the title The Family. By 1973, he was considered the world's top box office attraction at $1 million per film. Bronson's most famous role came at age 52 in Death Wish, and it was directed by Michael Winner. He played Paul Kersey, a successful New York architect, which turns into a crime-fighting vigilante after his wife is murdered and his daughter is sexually assaulted. This movie was so successful it spawned four sequels over the next two decades starring Bronson. By the mid-1970s, his box office drawing power had started to pass. Some of his movies were box office disappointments, even though they had good reviews. Despite what the audience or film critics thought, he continued to make films, and he played Albert Johnson in 1981's Death Hunt opposite Lee Marvin. Following that project, he departed United Artists and went on to Canon Films. Bronson was paid $1.5 million by Cannon to star in Death Wish 2, and the film was a huge success at the box office. Some of the other films that he did in the 1980s included 10 to Midnight, 1983, The Evil That Men Do, 1984, Death Wish 3, 1985, Murphy's Law, 1986, and Death Wish 4 in 1988. On May 18, 1990, his wife Jill passed after a long battle with breast cancer. 1994's Death Wish 5 was his last movie that was released in theaters. His final films were a trilogy of TV movies, which were Family of Cops, 1995, Family of Cops 2, 1997, and Family of Cops 3, 1999. In December 1998, Bronson was married for a third time to Kim Weeks and the marriage lasted for five years until Bronson died. 
Bronson's health deteriorated in his later years, and he retired from acting following his hip replacement in August of 1998. He died at the age of 81 on August 30th, 2003 in Los Angeles. His death certificate states respiratory failure with metastatic lung cancer with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and congestive cardiomyopathy as a secondary cause of death. His remains were interred at the Brownsville Cemetery in West Windsor, Vermont. There are two items that were buried with him that were interesting, his walking cane and Jill Ireland's ashes, which was his second wife. The cemetery is near a magnificent 400-acre farm that he and his wife had off of an unmarked dirt road. Bronson also owned homes in L.A. and Colorado. Bronson was very much a private man, and he spent his last years avoiding the paparazzi and autograph seekers. Bronson was at ease in Vermont, and that's where he felt at home most. The only guests that he had were his kids. Bronson once told a Hollywood reporter, I don't have friends, only thousands of acquaintances. I figured I had a wife and children. Charles Bronson was certainly a distinctive looking man in Hollywood. He was a true American blue collar loner. Early in his career, he once stated, I guess I look like a rock quarry that someone dynamited. Regardless of what you think about his looks, he has certainly entertained us for decades and he's been in some of the most iconic movies that have ever been made. Not only that, he is one of Hollywood's American heroes. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.